Get Up Nation. My name is Ben Biddick. I am the creator and host of the Get Up Nation podcast, where I serve individuals, organizations, and societies to develop and sustain resilience and perseverance. I'm the co-author of Get Up, The Art of Perseverance with former Major League Baseball player and CEO of Rurong Living, Adam Greenberg. The Get Up Nation podcast is brought to you in partnership with GotYour6Coffee.com, where Navy veteran Eric Hadley is committed to serving first responders, veterans, and their families through a variety of nonprofit organizations. No stranger to adversity, Eric has fused the necessity of coffee with his passion for public service. You're already purchasing coffee. Why not empower your coffee with purpose? Why not purchase coffee that not only has your six, but also has the backs of those who don a uniform of service for our communities and great country? Learn more about Eric and his freshly roasted award-winning coffee at gotyoursixcoffee.com. Welcome to this episode of the Get Up Nation podcast. Recently, I had the honor and privilege of speaking with Jenny Lee. She is a certified yoga therapist who has spent two decades coaching people in the healing tradition of classical yoga and meditation. She is the author of the award-winning book, True Yoga, and has been featured on dozens of wellness blogs and magazines. She is also the author of the book called Breathing Love, Meditation in Action. In this book, she offers hope to a world in turmoil by guiding readers into living love as an embodied meditation practice. I've been looking forward to speaking with Jenny today to explore her insights into resilience and living a life of true meaning and passion. Jenny, such a pleasure to connect with you today all the way from Hawaii. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Excellent. All right. I read recently that you're a morning person. What has your morning been like so far? Oh, you're following my Instagram. <laughs> yeah, mornings are my busy time. I'm usually up by 4.30 in the morning and I do some spiritual reading. I do a meditation to start my day. Usually get out for a walk or a surf if there's waves here in Hawaii and then jump into work. And honestly, by noon, I've accomplished more than a lot of people have before nine because it's my productive time. I see. All right. I also wanted to congratulate you. You just had a screenplay named in the 2019 Los Angeles International Screenplay Awards. Anything about that you'd like to share at all? Oh, thanks. Yeah. Nothing to share on that right yet. It's a new naming of that award and very excited about it. I'm kind of dipping back into screenwriting for the first time in many years. It was something I did years ago. And so kind of fun to see that. I'm going to go into some development meetings in the next couple of weeks and hopefully have more to share soon. Awesome. I will keep following Instagram and look forward to those updates. It's such a pleasure to connect with you today to talk about resilience, meditation, and action in a world which can appear quite disturbing and frightening. Will you share a little bit about what you mean when you talk about embodied love? Sure. You know, we, I think people have a lot of different interpretations of love, obviously, depending on their own experience of that. But I really believe that we are love, that that is our core nature. It's our true nature. It's certainly what yoga philosophy points to as what is our true nature. And it's really a process of kind of stripping away the things that have obscured that from our experience and our awareness. And so embodied love is really just coming back to the awareness of who you truly are, in my opinion. And yeah, that's a process, but it's a fun one. And why do you love the concept of resilience? What in your experience has led it to being important to you? So you may have noticed on that post yesterday that two of my things that I named as what has gotten me through hard times are my faith and resilience. And I really, really am a strong believer in the need to cultivate resilience, that it's a quality that we should be teaching our children from the time that they're little and not making everything easy. Because as you and I both know, life is not always easy. And so we have to have that ability to bounce back. And some of the strongest, most most amazing people that I have met in life have been people who have overcome really, really difficult experiences. And I know for me, the saddest and hardest times of my life are what have given me the foundation of strength and clarity to offer the work that I offer now and to stand in the joy that I stand in now. So I'm not sure if I answered the question, but that's my little first bit on resilience. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You describe how our perspective on love is important. You teach that instead of love being something that we need to acquire and preserve, we need to view love as something that to be realized and breathed. 
Will you share a little insight into this distinction? Yeah. Again, I think a lot of people think they have got to go find love out there from someone else or the validation from the masses, you know, like we see on social media, everyone kind of grasping for those likes and follows and look at me and that somehow love is separate from them and, and has to be found. And really in my experience, that's not accurate, that love is that quality within our own hearts that we are meant to cultivate breathe into this is a practice that i teach the in breathing love that meditation of breathing into the love that is already within you and allowing that to blossom and really start to spread out into the world and then what happens is kind of like the law of attraction you know the more you're breathing love out there it automatically magnetizes back to you people and experiences that are loving. And so it's really about finding it within first and allowing that to shine. And then all that you need, you're not even looking for it anymore because you're already in it. And then you, it just magnifies by what comes to be attracted to that. I love that. You know, I think of, of all the things that people pursue with our lives, whether it's, you know, we pursue wealth or fame, a perfect physique, a great job, various concepts that people describe as success. But often, like you said, it's a grasping that leads to disappointment and dissatisfaction frequently. Aren't we hungering for something larger and more transcendent than that? You go into details here about how people access wholeness and fullness that comes from living a life of love that towers above the smaller concepts I mentioned earlier. Certainly to live in the present moment without anger, fear, or anxiety is liberating. It allows us to connect with one another in ways that are truly satisfying and makes the world that we may have seen as dark and frightening before into a brilliant experience. What are some ways your book helps us to do this? So I try to be really tangible in my writing and give people a lot of exercises that are simple and doable in like five minutes because I know how busy everyone is and it is really hard to establish a lengthy period of meditation. That, that takes years of practice and time, but in each book, I offer very short, tangible ways to begin to do these practices of embodying love and touching into the love that already is waiting within your own heart and how to bring that out. And so it's really so much of it is changing our belief system too, though. And uh, there's a lot of discussion in Breathing Love about really reframing your whole concept of both who you are and what love is. And I find that that is really foundational because as soon as we do that, then a lot of the practices that I offer at the end of each chapter become much more self-explanatory and easy. But as an example, one of the most simple ones is just to sit down and connect to your heart center and to your breath and to acknowledge and intend that you're going to connect to the love that exists within you. And we all have that. And then to start being conscious with each breath of both breathing love in and breathing love out. And it's not brain surgery. It's a practice. It's simple, but it's really profound in how it changes your experience of how you walk in the world and how people respond to you. Truly. Yeah. And you speak of loss in your book as well. You mentioned someone who was important in your life who took his own life. And you help people face these tremendously troubling realities at Get Up Nation. We're committed to helping people thrive, overcome challenges. We're passionate about preventing suicide, creating satisfying relationships, and giving a world to our children that no one wants to intentionally exit prematurely. So will you share why it's important to face these troubling realities in our world and not run from them? Yeah, that's a subject that's really near and dear to my heart. And sadly, I have had several people close to me recently take their lives. And it is so profoundly sad because it's absolutely unnecessary if someone can reframe their concept of self. What the teachings of yoga really did for me was give me a strong, strong understanding that we are not our human story. So that human story might be filled with injury and loss and death and abuse or all manner of difficulty. Everyone has their kind of what I call their deck of cards that were given in a lifetime. And 
many lives are filled with difficulty. But this deck of cards is given to us so that we can grow and learn from these hard times and become stronger and become more loving people. And to know ourselves as more than just that story, that that really is not who we are are, it's just a certain set of circumstances that's happened to us. But that the soul, that true core self is untouched by all of those hardships. And when we can reframe and know ourselves as that untouchable, perfect, pure and whole love filled soul, then we can move through any difficulty and change circumstances in order to move forward in a positive and joyful way. I love how a section of your book addresses the reality of death. You write, given that death is inevitable and we will someday be asking ourselves these questions, why not consider them now? And then you go into a list and you ask things like, you know, what have I done with my life? Am I happy with what I've done? This conscious awareness of death can orient our action toward valuable investments of our time and energy. I just want to stop and ask those listening to this right now, what can you do right now, this moment, to communicate love, appreciation, or gratitude to someone you care about, or even more importantly, to someone you don't like very much? How are you right now able to create kindness in your life? And then, Jenny, I want to ask you, how amazing does life become when we make our focus and our practice on living a life of love? This is the highest order of things we work and we try to earn and we try to make ourselves all of these things. But when we shed all of those efforts and awaken to this awareness that you're talking about, that love is within us, it makes every moment an opportunity to truly create a finer world, to draw out the best of others, to give the best of ourselves. What is it like living this way? My life has changed so profoundly in the last 10 years since I really stepped onto this direction of of approaching life as you say, as every moment is an opportunity to choose to live love or not. And I know that every choice I make is either taking me closer to that experience of pure love in every moment, or it's taking me away from it. So it's something that's constantly in my awareness in every choice I make, every interaction, every conversation. And I am just 1,000 times more joyful now than I was 10 years ago. And so I can definitely say, and it's not like I haven't had really difficult times. I mean, I have been dead broke. I have lost most every person in my life other than my husband and my son, thank God. And I know what it's like to feel like you have nothing at times, but I also know what it is like to feel like everything is possible. And so I just really echo your encouragement to listeners to stop and think, not how can I get more, but how can I give more? Because that's the turning point. When we stop, when we reorient ourselves towards loving and kindness and generosity, even the smallest action, the smallest word or or kindness that we put out comes back to us a thousand fold. And it really gets us out of our own dark places. I love that. You describe how your book, Breathing Love, shows us how to open our hearts to recognize our true nature. And you've described the joy of experiencing this in your life. As you guide people in this practice, what are some of the experiences you've had seeing this enter other people's lives and How much joy does that give you as a teacher? Well, it's the ultimate joy and it's why I do what I do for sure. I mean, when I sit with somebody and I see any kind of an aha moment where they're starting to move out of their own inner darkness and out into that space of more spacious lightness of being, it's profound because I really believe that's what we're here for. And if I can help facilitate that in any way, that's my greatest joy and and desire. You know, I've seen people move out of relationships that were really toxic and abusive and just begin to bloom and shine and be creative. I've seen people move through health challenges that were pretty dire, but they've had a healing on the spiritual level where they've just learned to know themselves as so much more than a body that is affected in some way. I've seen people just find a greater 
ease within their own being. You know, they're not so worried about what everybody thinks of them all the time, but they just feel a greater sense of peace and they can relax into being themselves. And so all of these various ways are kind of manifestations of what this practice can bring. Mm, love that. Now, I wanted to get into your love of surfing. Will you share a little bit about your love of surfing? Certainly with the many similarities that have been articulated about surfing and mindfulness, how thoughts and feelings come and go like waves. Will you share how surfing can be a spiritual action, why you love it? Absolutely. One of my favorite things to talk about it just makes me happy even talking about it, even though we haven't had any waves recently here. But well, not waves that I can surf. There's big waves up on the North Shore, but I don't surf the big ones. But it is absolutely a practice of mindfulness. And it's why I think I love it so much because I can't think about work or anything else when I'm in the water. I have to be fully present, watching the waves as they're coming in, assessing where I need to be in order to get on them. And just the joy, the pure play and joy of standing up and riding a wave and feeling all the bumps and the turns is just, I feel like a kid. And I learned when I was in my 40s. And so it's not something that I've always had. And I, I honestly, sometimes I just sort of squeal with joy when I want to wave because it's total play. Ah, that's great. Tell us that you have a new book is coming out in September 2020. Will you share a little bit about that? Absolutely. So excited about third book called Spark Change, 108 Provocative Questions for Spiritual Evolution. And this book is kind of a my best way of offering what I do in my yoga therapy sessions with people when I'm coaching. It's my best way of offering some of the tools that I offer to my clients in book form. But basically, it's a book of questions, and it's centered around 12 themes of personal growth. And so it's a way for people to self-reflect and dig into some deeper self-awareness and look at how the process of conscious change and what they need to do to undertake that. And I, I'm a big questions fan, so I really am excited to share that with the world. That's great. As we come to the final six question portion of the show, I was wondering if you'd want to lead a short meditation here or if that's something I don't want to spring that on you. Yeah, I can do that. Listeners, wherever you find yourself in this moment, just take a slow, deep breath and feel your body connecting to what is beneath you. Maybe a chair, maybe you're lying down. Just feel your body connecting to the ground. Feel the breath moving into your heart space. And recognize that with each breath, you have the opportunity to remind yourself to breathe into love, the energy of love, which is the harmonizing principle in the universe. And as you take the next breath into love, you are placing yourself into internal harmony and external harmony. And as you continue with that intention and that conscious awareness, of your true nature as love itself, each breath being your reminder. You can walk out into the rest of your day feeling aligned, harmonious, centered, and at ease. Om Shanti Shanti. So that's just a real quick centering practice. Very typical of (laughs) what I offer in the book. Easy to do wherever you are. Awesome. That's so great. Thank you so much. Jenny, I always end the show with six questions to help my listeners understand the why within my phenomenal guests. Will you run through these six quick questions with me? Sure. Yeah. All right. Who are you thankful for today? My son and my husband. And now that we've covered who you're thankful for today, what are you thankful for today? The never-ending opportunities to grow in love. 
How do you fuel the fire within you? Prayer and meditation. What is one thing adversity taught you to value? The love that I experience from all people in different forms and ways and the absolutely infinite manifestations of love that exist in the world. What are you doing today you may have never thought you could? <laughs> Publishing a book with Sounds True and potentially having a screenplay produced. <laughs> That's awesome. And then what will you do tomorrow that you may have never thought you could? Oh, heck yeah. I'm going to produce another one and publish another book. So there's no stopping now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. How can people learn more about you and your amazing work? My website is my name, Jenny Lee. It's with an I-E, J-E-N-N-I-E-L-E-E, yogatherapy.com, JennyLeeYogatherapy.com. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ben. Have a great day. So glad to be here.